A few days ago, I posted on threads, art world jargon is not a sign of intelligence. Being able to speak in an accessible way is. The response was bigger than I expected to say the least. And today I wanna dive into why I said that, why I even think that. What's up glorifiers, I'm Mariah Elise. Welcome back if you've been rocking and welcome if you're new. On this channel, we talk about the nuances of the art world from my perspective. We also bring in others who are active in this space to share their perspectives. Today, we're talking about jargon and how necessary it is or isn't. Is it needed? Or is it an overuse of exclusionary language? I do wanna give the reference point that I do have a degree in communications from the University of Houston. And I've worked in public relations and marketing for major brands, cross-functionally with brands like Macy's, Ulta, and Butter Skin, on developing language that's accessible to customers. Now on the art side of things, one of my skill sets while I'm active in artist development is to help artists clarify their dissertations, artist statements, and grant applications. I help them use language that isn't too poetic, too flowery, language that is accessible to the reader without the reader having to read it 10 times to understand what the artist is saying. So I've seen how important clear communication is, how important it can be in order for an artist to get their point across. So let's talk about why unnecessary jargon holds us back and why I'm committed to accessible language. Let's break this down. When I talk about art world jargon, I'm not referring to necessary technical terms like contraposto or chiaroscuro. Those are essential. They convey very specific concepts that professionals within this field understand immediately. These words are tools for quick and precise information within the industry and they serve a very important purpose. What I'm talking about is unnecessary, the unnecessary use of complex language that adds no real value. Think of words like juxtapose or juxtaposition when you could just say contrast. I'm not saying that juxtaposition isn't a word that most people don't understand because truly the people that I speak to every day understand words like juxtaposition, right? But contrast is the simplest form of juxtaposition. There's nothing wrong with juxtaposition, but if it's not adding clarity, it's probably not needed. Another example is the word diction. When you say that an artist uses complicated diction in their artist statement, all you're saying is the artist is choosing complicated words. Diction equals word choice. Now, you may sound more intelligent when you say diction, but you will reach more people if you just say word choice. Overcomplicated language creates a barrier for people who might otherwise be able to connect with the art, and that's where the real issue lies. The issue remains for folks who have high comprehension levels. Even people with high comprehension skills can struggle with overcomplicated sentences in dense language. This isn't about intelligence, it's about how our brains process language and how clarity affects comprehension. When we read complex sentences, our brains are handling more information than usual. If a sentence is filled with abstract concepts, multiple clauses, or technical jargon, it requires more mental resources to interpret. Even highly skilled readers may experience cognitive overload where they need to reread to fully understand the message. I don't believe in language serving a style over substance. I don't believe in leaving folks to extract the actual message hidden behind layers of intellectual sounding words. So here's a few examples. Let's say you're explaining a piece of art and you find yourself using terms like dialectical engagement or ontological exploration. These words sound really impressive, I guess, but are they really communicating the core message of your work? When someone says dialectical engagement, they're typically explaining a process of exploring contrasting ideas or viewpoints to gain a deeper or more balanced perspective. For example, this could mean an artwork that prompts viewers to consider two opposing forces or perspectives. Yes, you may have shortened your explanation, but your second explanation also sounded intelligent and was a lot more clear. You could just simply say, exploring different or opposing perspectives to reach a deeper understanding. You understand that a lot quicker than you understand dialectical engagement. When someone uses the term ontological exploration, they're usually referring to a work or a concept that examines fundamental questions about existence or what it means to be. For instance, 
an artwork might explore themes of identity, self-awareness, or the nature of reality. Examining what it means to exist or exploring the nature of reality and identity is a simpler way to say that. Let me say that again. A simpler way to say ontological exploration is saying examining what it means to exist. Often, artists and professionals in the art world use these words because they think it makes them sound more intellectual, or they might just naturally be using it. But in reality, they're creating distance between themselves and their audience. One of the biggest questions we can ask is, who needs simple language and why? So let's talk about who really benefits from simple and clear language. First of all, artists. When you're explaining your work to collectors, clarity is key. Collectors are often trying to understand the story or the meaning behind the work. They want to connect with it on a personal level. Overcomplicating that explanation with jargon can make the connection difficult. You don't want to create distance between your artwork and the collector or the viewer. If you're able to communicate your vision clearly, collectors and viewers are more likely to feel that emotional pull towards your work I've had so many conversations with artists that feel like using fancier language made their work seem more sophisticated. But when they simplified their explanations, they saw a stronger connection with the viewer. This isn't about dumbing down your work or dumbing down your message. It's about making sure that message resonates. When it comes to artist talks, it's even more crucial. You're likely speaking to a mixed audience. Other artists, curators, and people who might just be there interested in learning more about your work will be there. And typically, you only have 30 minutes to an hour to speak. If your language is too academic, you risk alienating part of that audience and not getting your message through. Remember, you're not just presenting your artwork, you're inviting others to engage with it. The clearer you are, the deeper that engagement can be. Similarly, when artists explain their work to galleries or when galleries speak to potential collectors, clarity is essential. A gallery should be able to explain the artist's vision clearly to someone who's interested in learning more about the work. If the explanation is too abstract, you miss the opportunity to build that connection. I've seen this happen many times. An artist's work is brilliant, but if the explanation is not accessible, the message gets lost. Even museums, when doing tours or educational programs, they need to ensure that they're using clear language. Museums want people to leave feeling inspired by the art, not feeling confused or out of the loop. That's why it's so important that we, as artists and art professionals, use language that bridges the gap, not widens it. So. Why lean into simple language? Because clarity creates connection. Art is about expression and communication. And when we communicate clearly, we allow people to engage more fully with the work. Overcomplicated language can make people feel like they don't belong in the conversation. And that is not what art should be about. Even when the concept behind the art is complex, there's always a way to explain it in a simple, accessible, manner. It doesn't mean you're simplifying the art itself. You're simply making sure that the meaning comes across. A complex piece of art can still be understood clearly if you find the right language. I've worked with artists who initially struggled to express complex ideas without jargon, but once they started breaking it down into simpler terms, they saw a huge difference in how their work was received. It's about giving people access to your ideas, not building barriers with language. I want to introduce two scenarios to make this make even more sense. Scenario one is using jargon. Imagine an artist explaining their work to a collector and saying, this piece interrogates the liminality of post-colonial identity within a transdisciplinary framework. It sounds academic, but how many people truly understand what that means at first listen or first read? Like, what did I just say? So many people may feel disconnected from that explanation. Now, scenario number two, using clear language. This piece explores how identities are shaped after colonization and how they interact 
one another. That's what clear communication does. It invites people in. Now, this is why I'm making the choice to use simple language. Here's my commitment to you. I'm going to continue to use language that's clear, simple, and accessible. Whether I'm talking to artists, collectors, galleries, you guys, enthusiasts, I want everyone to feel invited into this conversation. Human connection is way more important than using over-intellectualized language. With my background in communications and my experience helping artists and brands clarify their language, I've seen how powerful clear communication can be. It's about making art something everyone can engage with, not just a select few. I've never talked about my professional experience on this channel outside of the arts, but quite honestly, it has informed a ton of my thought process. So it might make sense for me to make parallels there here on this channel, because that parallel thinking is what helps shape my perspective. So here's my stance. Art world jargon is not a sign of intelligence. Clear communication is. The goal of art is to connect people and our language should reflect that. If you can make someone feel someone with your work, why not make sure they understand what you're saying, what you're communicating? I really love to hear your thoughts. Do you think our world jargon is necessary? Do you think we need to communicate more clearly? Let's talk about that in the comments. Now, before we dive further into how clear communication impacts your art career, I wanna quickly share a tool I created that can help you plan and create a successful exhibition from start to finish. If you're an artist looking to show your work, but you're feeling super overwhelmed by the planning process, the exhibition planning workbook is going to be designed for you and everyone who needs help there. This book breaks down everything you need to know from finding a perfect venue to budgeting effectively to planning your exhibition, every task, every milestone along the way to curating a memorable experience for your audience. It's packed with checklists, timeline templates, and strategies that simplify every step of your planning process so you can focus on what matters most your art whether you're new to exhibitions or you're looking to refine your process this guide makes sure you cover every single step if you're ready click the link in the description to get your copy of the exhibition planning workbook all right as we're talking about the importance of clear communication i've created a resource that can help you take your own language to a simplified level this is a free downloadable guide designed to help you write and speak about your art more clearly. Inside, you're gonna find a glossary of simpler alternatives to common jargon, along with tips to how to communicate complex ideas in a way that's easy for everyone to understand. Now, whether you're preparing for an artist talk, explaining your work to a gallery, or just wanna connect more deeply with your audience, this guide is tailored to help you make your messaging a lot more clear and a lot more impactful. So if you're ready to start communicating your art with clarity and confidence, download this free guide from the link in my description. It's completely free and it's my way of helping you bridge the gap between your work and your audience. All right, thank you guys for tuning in once again. And remember, we all own this road to glory together. This is Dear Glory, I'm Mariah Elise. Peace.